Howdy gang and welcome to your 7th VUX tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about actions. I just want to point out one of the limitations of mutations and that's that we really shouldn't be using any kind of asynchronous task with inside them. For example, say inside a mutation, you wanted to reach out and grab some data from the server. You want to communicate with the server. That is an asynchronous task and it's going to take some time to complete. So I'm not going to do that, but instead what I'll do is a set timeout, which is the same kind of thing. It's going to take some time to complete before this callback function is going to be fired. So let's do a set timeout and just imagine this is where you're going out and grabbing some data or communicating with the server. And what we're going to do is fire a function in here and this function is going to be this thing right here, the callback function, where we're changing the state, all right, up here. And down here, we're going to have a delay of three seconds, which is 3,000 milliseconds. So this callback function right here is going to change the state after three seconds. So this right here is like asynchronous code, right? It's going to take some time to complete. So if I save this now, let's view this in a browser and see what happens. So if I try to reduce the price now, notice that straight away it doesn't change, but this appears straight away. Then it's three seconds and then we get the change, okay? So it's very hard for us to attribute this change right here with the change that happened several seconds later. And if we're doing many different actions, um, or rather many different mutations that have asynchronous code inside them, then it's gonna get very hard to track which function is changing what. OK, because we've got all these different time delays going on. So really, we shouldn't be putting asynchronous code inside mutations. Fortunately, there is a way around this, and that is using actions. So actions are another layer which sit between the component, which is committing the mutation and also the mutation itself okay so they sit before the mutation and they can perform any kind of asynchronous code within the action itself so let's do this first of all let's get rid of this stuff and then let's create an action so down here underneath mutations we'll do a comma and we'll say actions and inside the actions, this is um, an object, by the way, we can have as many actions as we want. We're going to name an action reduce price just to keep everything the same. And this action can take a parameter called context. And the context basically is kind of like the store, if you like. It's not exactly the store, but we can kind of use it as the store. So we're going to take that as a parameter and we'll use that in a minute. We're using a fat arrow function here and inside here, we're going to do some kind of asynchronous task. So again, I'm just going to say set timeout for now. So this set timeout is going to fire some kind of function and that function is going to fire after two seconds, right? So inside this function, then what I'm going to do is just call this mutation right here. Okay, so we're doing the same thing really. Instead of putting the asynchronous task around this thing, we're just doing it here and then calling the mutation once this asynchronous task is complete. So say for example, you're reaching out to the server to communicate to it, it responds in some way, shape or form, then we're going to fire the mutation. So how do we fire the mutation? Because inside the component over here, we'd say this.store.commit, then the mutation name. This time, all we do is say context, which is kind of like the store, and then say dot commit, and then we can say which um, mutation we want to commit. We want to commit the reduce price uh, mutation, okay? So now, if we save this, and then go back to this over here, instead of committing directly from the component now, what we're gonna do is dispatch an action instead. And this is typically how we perform mutations. Even if you're not doing any kind of asynchronous tasks, it's always good practice to, instead of directly committing a mutation from your component, to dispatch an action, which can then perform some kind of mutation or commit a mutation, okay? So get in the practice of doing that. So for now, what I'm gonna do is get rid of this code, and I'm also gonna get rid of this commit right here. So instead of that, we want to say this.store.dispatch and then we're going to dispatch an action right here. And the action we're going to dispatch is reduce hyphen price. So just to run through this again, 
when in this component we're clicking on this button, we're calling this reduce price function, this method down here. Then it says this.store.dispatch and we're dispatching an action here and we're dispatching the reduce price action. So if we go to the store, we can see that action right here and it's reduce price. We're taking the context as a parameter, which is a little bit like the store itself. It kind of represents that. Then we're performing some kind of asynchronous task. This is just a set timeout, but for you, it could be communicating with a server or grabbing some data. Then when that task is complete, in this case, after two seconds, what we're doing is we're saying context.commit a mutation. Then we're calling the mutation after this asynchronous task. And this is because we shouldn't really be, be performing the asynchronous task inside the mutation itself. So after two seconds, we're going to commit this mutation, which is then going to change the data. So if we save all this now and come to the browser, I'm just going to refresh. Before, when we clicked on this, we'd see the mutation straight away, but it would be two or three seconds before the data changed. Now, if we click it, we don't see the mutation until the data changes. So now they're in sync and now we can easily attribute the change to this mutation right here. OK, so much easier when you're debugging. So one more thing I want to show you, and that is how we can pass through parameters to these actions and mutations. So if we go back over here, we can see right now we're dispatching this action. But what if we wanted to pass through some kind of parameter to say, OK, well, I want to reduce the price by a certain amount. OK, well, what we could do where we call the function up here is pass through that amount. And this could be dynamic if you want to. I'm just going to pass through four. But like I said, could be dynamic. The user could enter a value and you could use that value if you wanted to. So we're passing four now through as a parameter to this reduce price method. So we can accept it in the method and we'll call it amount. So if we want to pass this data through when we're dispatching an action, we can pass it through as a second parameter right there. First parameter is the action name. The second parameter can be the amount, the data we're sending through as a parameter. So if we save it now and come back to the store, we can accept this as a second parameter over here. So the first one is context. And because we've got more than two, uh, one parameter now in this fat arrow function, we have to place parentheses around them. So context is the first one. The second one is going to be called payload. And this refers to the data that we've sent it right here as the second parameter. So this is the payload. We're sending a payload to this action and then we can use it. All right. So same goes for the mutation. We can send that payload to it as a second parameter when we commit. So I'm going to send it right there. Then right here where we're receiving state as a parameter, we can also receive the payload again. So we're passing it through. First of all, we're passing it from here to this method. Then we're passing it through the dispatch method when we're calling an action. The action is taking that payload. Then when we call the mutation after two seconds, after this asynchronous task, we're passing through that data again, the payload to the mutation, and we're receiving it in the mutation as well. And this time, instead of reducing it by one, we can reduce it by the payload, which in this case is going to be four because we specified four right here at the top. OK, so let's try this out now. So even though I have specified four, it's only going to be two when we reduce it because of the whole half price sale thing. So let's reduce the price and we should see after a while it goes down to eight. So four in total, halved, and then we're reducing that. OK, so that's really cool. That's how we can send data as well to these actions and onto the mutations and use that data when we're changing the state of the application. So that is actions for you. Like I say, always good practice to use actions, um, even if you're not using any kind of asynchronous code.